how are we feeling about this lighting? I feel like it's good. Usually in Oregon, it's dark out my window, but today, super sunny. Okay, what if you have got a new bookkeeping client and you have no idea where to start? What if they have years and years of transactions that aren't in QuickBooks and you need to catch up a whole bunch of old bookkeeping work? Today we're going to be talking all about that and I've broken it into four steps for you guys. First of all, familiarize yourself with the books, then figure out exactly where to start, like what date should you start at. Then you actually have to do the catch up work, so get all the old transactions into QuickBooks. And number four, start your normal monthly ongoing work. And I did just post a really long comprehensive video all about cleanups. So that differs slightly from this. This is if you have a client and the books are in a pretty good place or you've completed the cleanup maybe. This is what to do in that case. But a cleanup would be if there's tons of mistakes, tons of messed up stuff in the books and you need help figuring out how long it's gonna take, how to price it, where to start with that. Definitely check out that video after this one if you're interested. The thumbnail looks like this. All right, so first of all, you just wanna familiarize yourself with the client's books. Assuming this is a new client that you haven't, like, you know, you don't know much about them or what they've been doing before you got here, you wanna, of course, at first get access to their QuickBooks and get their bank statements and then just start poking around, seeing how it looks. So where do they categorize things? You can open up the chart of accounts and see all the categories that they're using. You can see how things are named. You can see, you know, are they breaking down their income? How are they categorizing like meals or how are they doing office supplies? What do their utilities look like? You can pull a profit and loss statement for the last couple of years, see how things are being categorized there. I like to even do like a month by month. So after you pull the profit and loss, you can change the view at the top and have it go by month. So then it'll show you January, February, March, April, May. So you can kind of see how they're categorizing things month to month. Pull a balance sheet, see how much money, how much cash is in their bank accounts, see what kind of equity they have, see if there is any outstanding loans. Some of this stuff hopefully maybe you knew about just from talking to the client, but just get a feel for everything and how it's looking. All right, number two, figure out where to start. So a really great way to do this is go to the reconciliation report, see when it was last reconciled. So that's gonna help you figure it out. Are you catching up only four months worth of work? Are you catching up two years worth of work? You're also gonna wanna check with your client on when the last time they filed a tax return is, because really bookkeeping, a large part of it besides the client knowing what their finances look like is so that we can file taxes and pay the right amount to the IRS. But the point is, if there's three years of catch up to do and two of them have already had their taxes filed, I would talk to my client and recommend that we just start with the most recent one that needs the taxes filed because I would consider that the priority. So we get that year done, you know, they pay you for it, they figure out, you know, what a cost investment this is going to be for them, and then they can decide if they want to go back and just have the data for themselves and catch up the rest of of those other years. In my experience, people don't really care about the historical data as much if the, they've already filed their taxes. And I did talk about in that cleanup video, in some cases it might be easier to start fresh with a new QuickBooks account. Um, you can kind of play that by ear, but in this scenario, we're assuming that things aren't too messed up, that they just need to be caught up. And I don't think I have mentioned yet, my name is Morgan, my website is finepoints.biz. Definitely check out my free masterclass and checklist. I love to help bookkeepers get organized and kind of come alongside you as you're starting your business because I know it can be super overwhelming. So if that seems interesting to you, definitely consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the red button down below. And as always, a thumbs up is a huge compliment if you like this video. All right, and step three, this is when you do the actual work of doing all of the catch up work. So let's just assume we have one year of data that we need to go back and categorize and put into QuickBooks. So what I would recommend is starting with the bank feeds, you're gonna wanna figure out how many months of data your client's bank will import to QuickBooks. So they'll always do at least three months in the past and some banks will do way more than that. So if you get more than that, you are really good to go, really golden. I personally have found Chase Bank works really well with QuickBooks. They give you a lot of data and they don't like try to restrict it by date or anything. But say the bank is only gonna give you three months, but you need to do 12 months in the past. You can still definitely do this by importing a spreadsheet. You do not have to enter all of those transactions manually. That would be a huge nightmare. So in this case, what I do is I go into the bank website and you can pull a report, pull a spreadsheet from the date that you want to start. So probably January. And just a quick note, in some cases, you're going to be able to log in as a guest and get this information 
but in some cases you're going to need your client to log into their bank so they can pull these spreadsheets and maybe you're gonna to wanna to be on the phone with them or um, on like a Zoom call or something so you can help them get these spreadsheets of data that you need. All right, so get all of that information pulled off the bank website into a spreadsheet. There is gonna be different options of the type of spreadsheet you can do. Sometimes they have a special one, I think that is designed for QuickBooks, but even if it's not, one of those options is gonna work for you. So I think just like a regular Excel sheet is totally fine. When you're in QuickBooks and working to upload it, it'll also tell you the supported file types. All right, it is kind of your choice at this point if you want to just import a month at a time. So just do January, categorize it all, and then move on to February and keep uploading it. In this case, I would probably just import everything you need all into the bank feeds because remember in the bank feeds it's not yet in quickbooks so it's not like finalized it's just there waiting for you to categorize so i do think it's helpful just to have a big list sitting there waiting for you and then you can mass categorize a lot of stuff all right so congratulations you've got all of your data in quickbooks in the bank feeds it's sitting waiting for you to start out i like to do just one month so i would organize by date and categorize all of the transactions from january of the year that you're working on and later on once you get in the groove i think you can do multiple months but to start out i would just do one month get it all done reconcile it with the bank statement and then at this point i would touch base with the client so i would send them the january profit and loss and be like this is what I've done so far. This is how I categorize things. Are you happy with this? Would you like to make changes? If you have questions about certain vendors you don't know, you can ask about those vendors, etc. So once you hear back from the client, you talk to them, you feel pretty confident that January is perfect and it's reconciled, then you can move on to the subsequent months. And like I mentioned, it's probably going to be quicker, more efficient, if you take a few months at a time so you're able to you know put all the at t bills into utilities and you're able to put all of the rent into the rent expense so for this i like to sort by vendor or in some cases it's better to sort by description because that is usually what feeds in from the bank again depending a little bit on how that original spreadsheet was set up but try to clump things together so you can use the quickbooks rules because quickbooks learns as it goes so you're not going to have to click on every single thing and categorize it after it learns what you're doing then you can just like click a bunch and add them to quickbooks all right so just continue this process until you make it through the year so again it's up to you if you want to um you know do each month individually so do you want to you already did january so do you want to do february and reconcile that march reconcile that april depending on how complex the client is sometimes it is going to be more efficient for you to you know put in all the stuff for February, March, April, and then just grab the April statement and reconcile that. And if that comes out well, then you know you can move on. If it doesn't, you might have to just do February and then just do March. So continue to just work your way through the year and at the end or at periodically if needed, um, you can check in with your client again and ask them any questions and use that information to continue to make their books more and more accurate. If there's a lot of kind of confusing vendors or vendors are used for more than one thing, or there's things that I don't recognize or QuickBooks isn't learning, then I do sometimes keep my own spreadsheet and be like, okay, when this transaction comes through on the first from this vendor, it's different and it goes in a different category than when this vendor, this transaction comes through on the 15th. So if there's little quirks, I make notes for myself in a spreadsheet so that I don't have the same questions over and over depending on you know how much i can keep in my brain all right and the fourth step is continue work month by month so what i mean by this is you've already caught up the whole year your client has approved it and now you can just look into the future instead of into the past so along the way you, there might be processes that you figured out ways to make things efficient and effective or maybe you found problems in some of the ways they're you know dealing with checks or dealing with invoices or something so you can make really good systems going forward. Maybe there are some KPIs, some key performance indicators that your client wants to track. So maybe they wanna see like how much percentage of our total income are we spending on payroll? Or maybe they wanna say which income stream is the most profitable. So I do have a video all about KPIs, the thumbnail looks like that. You can check it out after this one. Um, but my point is anything you can do to add value to your client is really going to set you apart as a bookkeeper. You're gonna to wanna to make routines about kind of the cadence of when you're doing this work. Is it, do you work on it every week or once a month? 
month or how often you need to revisit these books. What reports does the client want? So typically I send a profit and loss and a balance sheet. The balance sheet shows them their owner's draws if they are um, taking distributions and not a salary, you know, paycheck. And oftentimes I like to break the profit and loss up by month so they can see like every month am I doing better than the previous month. Let me know in the comments if there's other favorite reports that you like to send to clients. And what about pricing? So I talked about this at a little more length in the other video that I mentioned. Basically you can charge by the hour, which is pretty simple, or you can charge a fixed rate price based on the amount of months that you need to catch up. Say you charge $70 an hour and you think every month of this catch-up job is going to take you one hour. So January takes you an hour, February takes you an hour, etc. Then you just times it by the number of months that you are doing. So that is hourly. If you know how much you're going to be charging your client each month, so maybe their monthly fee is $200 then it also makes logical sense that you could do like a fixed rate based on the months or years of catch up. So if you have one year to catch up and it's 12 months at $200 a month, then that's $2,400 that you need to charge them for the entire year. And that does kind of feel like a lot like that can definitely be sticker shock to your client when they're like, oh my gosh, like such a big chunk all at once. But I really would try to encourage you to see like your job as having value instead of like an hourly rate. So how much value is it for them to get their finances in order? Is that worth like $2,000 to them? probably depending on the business. And I do recommend Veronica Wasik. Um, she has a bunch of courses that go over cleanups and she has some good checklists. Some things are free, some things are paid, but she recommends doing a paid diagnostic review before you start catching up someone's books um, to like diagnose what the problems are, how long it's gonna take. This is what the graphic looks like. If you do decide to get her course, definitely use my link that is in the description box because that helps support my channel. All right, let me know any questions you guys have about catching up or getting started with a client's books. Let's chat about it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. The sun is now coming across my face. So I am going to let you go and I will see you next week with another new video. All right, take care, bye.